Hello and welcome to your Mobility and Release Clinic on Extension Dominant Posture. Today we'll show you how to rebalance your body and optimize your movement quality if you're suffering from this common movement distortion pattern. We'll use a handful of stretches and strength exercises to help to realign your body and optimize your movement quality. Our first segment is soft tissue mobilization. You're going to need your fluid kit which has a variety of different tools to help reduce the tension and overactive muscles associated with your movement and balance. You're going to want to spend about 60 seconds on each of the areas defined, reducing the tension with a ball or foam roller, followed by a neuromuscular stretch to help to elongate the muscle and restore the appropriate range of motion in all of the areas of the body targeted. Let's begin. This is a soft tissue release technique of the erector muscles of the spine. Erectors are traditionally overused in extension dominance as the pelvis tips down and the back creates a hyperextension in the lumbar portion of the spine. To reduce the tension, you're going to place a foam roller just over the top of your pelvic line between the pelvis and the rib, and you're going to draw your arms into your torso, going into a slight crunch, and then lift the pelvis off the ground. So you're going to use your abdominals to flex the spine. This inherently is going to stretch the erectors right out of the gates. From there, you're gonna shift your weight to one hemisphere by slightly rolling into one side of the body. And then on that same side, you're gonna take the leg over, pulling the pelvis under by engaging the hamstring and pulling the pelvis with it. With this setup, you're now going to breathe out, contracting your abdominals, pulling the spine into flexion, lacing the length of the erector under the pressure of the roller. And as you breathe out, you're gonna to look to the opposite direction. So Ryan's gonna come up, crunch, turn his head to the same side, this would be his right hemisphere, and look to the left. Then he's gonna relax, breathe in, and then sink into that roller. Each time he goes through that stretch by flexing and relaxing, he should feel a natural reduction in tone as the muscle gets softer and his body goes back into extension. Go through that process about six times, breathing out as you crunch, looking to the left and breathing in as you come back up, and you should start to feel a noticeable relaxing of these muscles and it should get easier and easier. We'll go through that about six to 10 times and then get into our stretch. So let's get started. To complete the neuromuscular stretch of the erector complex, it's gonna require that we engage our abdominals. Remember the erectors extend the back, the abdominals flex it. So we always wanna use the opposition muscle group or opposing muscle group to get the length out of the muscles that we're trying to stretch. And that's how we're gonna go through this system and involve the nervous system. So Ryan's gonna get down on all fours. He's gonna place his palms under his shoulders and he's keeping his hips underneath of, or his knees underneath of his hips. He's gonna start in an erect position, arching the spine just a little bit. And then he's gonna sit his hips back down towards his heel, rounding the spine and letting his head fall down towards his chest. This is going to round the spine and begin to stretch through the muscles. Now at the bottom of this position, he's gonna breathe out, flex his abdominals and reach his arm across the body to get more length out of the hemisphere that we just rolled on. Require that, or recall that we had the foam roller across his back. He tipped into the right side and then went through that breathing drill. As you breathe out, you'll feel a natural stretch of those erector muscles. Then breathe in, come back to neutral, Bring your body weight up over your palms and go back into extension. The act of flexing and then relaxing engages the central nervous system in its natural response so that the body will want to elongate the muscle after it flexes. So he's gonna flex through the extensors by arching the back and then round, sit back into it, stretch, let the head fall, breathe out and reach the arm across. As he does that, he'll start to feel again a natural length each time he breathes out. He's gonna breathe in, dome through the trunk, arch through the back, and then breathe out, sink back in, come down to hip flexion, head falls down, breathe out, engage the oblique on the opposite hemisphere, and reach across the torso. He would go through about again six to 10 of these cycles. Each time he's gonna feel a noticeable relaxing of those muscle groups and he should be able to sit his hips deeper and deeper. His head should be able to fall further and further towards his sternum, and his arms should be able to reach across the body with more ease and efficiency. 
So good job, right? Now that we've finished the stretch, you're gonna to wanna to go back to the opposite hemisphere, roll on the other side of the spine, reduce the tension, and then finish it off with the same stretch protocol that we just showed you. Let's move on to our next release. The second release for extension dominance has to do with one of the lateral hip flexors called the TFL, or tensor fascia lata. It's a muscle group that's found just underneath of your hip bone that you can identify by finding your pelvis, finding the little elbow of your femur called the trochanter, and then isolating the muscle in between it, right in the front of your hip. That's where you're gonna find the muscle. If you bring your leg up, extend it out to the side, and then rotate the knee in, you'll feel that muscle flex, and then that's gonna help you to identify where to place this ball. We're gonna do a soft tissue mobilization drill using the low cross ball, and Ryan's gonna do this on his left hip. He's gonna start by laying on the side of his body, and he's gonna place the ball underneath of his pelvis in that general area that we spoke about, and he's gonna lean his body weight into it. You're gonna notice that he's supporting his head with his arm on the left side. He's bringing his leg, his opposite leg, over his torso, and he's gonna to try to stack his pelvis so that his right and left hip bones are right over each other. Now, if that's too much pressure, because again, this is a sensitive muscle, there's a lot of weight from your body weight coming down on that ball, you can always begin the position by rotating the hip off the ball, placing the ball down below your pelvis, and then slowly rolling your weight onto it until your tolerance is met. If it's too intense and the muscle guards, it will flex and the leg will push down towards the ground. That's an indication that it's too much tension. Once we've got our body in that general position, making sure that the spine is neutral, the pelvis is in alignment, you can place the weight of your body into that ball Sit there until you start to feel a noticeable relaxing. Now the muscle's opposition or opposing movement is extension. So what we would want to do is breathe out and draw the leg behind you, bringing it up and behind, flossing the weight or the pressure of that ball into the muscle bed, and then relax it, let the body drop down, and then sink into the belly of the muscle again to see if the passive tone of the muscle has increased. We'd go through again, six to 10 of these cycles, breathe out, bring it back, stretch through the muscle, bring it forward, flexing it, putting pressure into the belly of the muscle again, and then going through that same action several times. So as you go through this process, you'll notice that the muscle becomes less and less guarded, it gets a little bit softer each time, and you should be able to feel a noticeable release around that hip socket. And then that brings us to the end of the release. We'll go into the stretch next. To complete the neuromuscular stretch of the TFL muscle, we're gonna to need to do the exact opposite of what its muscle action is. Recall that the TFL is a flexor, an abductor, and an internal rotator of the femur. So to stretch it, we're gonna to need to do the exact opposite of that action. So to do that, Ryan's gonna step back and we're gonna be on his left side. He's gonna bring the back of the leg back into extension. He's going to rotate it externally, and he's going to adduct the leg by bringing it in towards the midline, almost like a curtsy. It's gonna put the body into a position where it's gonna start stretching that muscle. Now, to intensify the stretch, he's gonna breathe out, pull the tailbone under, flexing the pelvis under. He's gonna reach across with his left arm so that the thoracic rotates inward. His gaze is going to go to the left, or his head is gonna to go to the left, and his gaze is gonna to go to the right. This is gonna set up the central nervous system, to tell that muscle to relax and to elongate. You can go through about two or three breathing cycles, breathing out deeply, reaching across the body, keeping the heel anchored on the ground, breathe out, tilt the head, and again, gaze to the right. As soon as he's done with one or two of those, he's gonna bring that leg back up into flexion, abduction, and internal rotation and push into his palm engaging and flexing the muscle to stimulate it. And this is gonna require that the body flexes the TFL. That's going to overstimulate it, he's gonna relax it. And then you should be able to see a natural increase in range of motion as the body starts to lengthen from the flex into stretch. One more time, leg is across the body to the midline, foot is externally rotated. He's gonna breathe out, pull his tailbone under, reach across the body and gaze to the right. Go through another three to four cycles of breathing, and you'll start to see that the muscle lengthens up for you, and then we would move on to our next release. The next soft tissue mobilization drill is gonna be applied to our quadricep muscles. There are four, as the name indicates, 
And the two that are the primary concern are the rectus femoris, the one that's right up the front of the leg, and the lateralis, the one on the side or lateral portion of the femur. These muscles are responsible for extending the knee and lifting the leg up in deflection like it would be in gait, but functionally they also pull the pelvis anteriorly, inferiorly, extending through the length of the spine and the lumbar, and if they're overly tight, it creates hypercompression, creating postural distortions through the rest of the body. So it's very important that we reduce their pressure, and we're gonna show you how to do just that. So Ryan's gonna take his fascia release ball, apply it right over the top of his kneecap, and get into position. He's gonna be on his left side of the body, his right leg is gonna come up into abduction and flexion, just like it would be in gait, and then he's going to position his shoulders so that they're right over his elbows, trying to maintain a nice neutral spinal alignment with his head in line with his rib cage. The pressure of the ball is going to be on that primary muscle right on the front of his quad, the rectus femoris. He's going to sit there and breathe in deeply, expand through the ribs, breathe out, engage his abdominals, and flex into his pelvis, pulling his pelvis under. Now with the weight of the ball, or the, of his body being pushed into the ball, he's gonna bend the knee and start to, again, flex through the knee, stretching the pressure of that muscle underneath the ball. This is gonna compress the, the muscle between the femur and the ball, and every time he breathes out, he's gonna bend. Every time he breathes in, he's gonna let the knee go and sink deeper and deeper into the passive tone of that muscle bed. We're gonna go through the drill once again about six to 10 times. And you can apply the same technique of flexion extension with the breathing up and down the length of the rectus femoris or, or possibly shift the weight even more laterally so that the weight of the body is on the lateral quad, the lateralis, and you can go through the same thing. All said and done, you're gonna to wanna to go through six to 10 of these breathing drills and then go into the stretch. So the neuromuscular stretch of the quadricep complex is going to require that you get into a split stance or kneeling position. So Ryan has his right leg ahead of us. We're going to be targeting the left hemisphere today. He's going to position his body so that his spine is stacked over his hips. He's going to breathe out and tuck the tailbone under. As he does that, he's going to breathe out, engage his abdominals, and flex the glute on the same side of the body. At the apex of the breath, he's going to tip to the other side. He's going to gaze to the right and turn his head to the left. At the end of that stretch, he's gonna relax, come back up, and then he's gonna flex his foot into the ground like he's trying to straighten the knee on the left hemisphere. So he's flexing the quads momentarily for about just about six seconds or so. He's gonna relax it, let it go, and then go back into the same process. Breathe out, tuck the tailbone under, engage the oblique, flex the glute, contralateral tilt, and again, change the head and the gaze to the right. We would go through again six to ten cycles of that breathing protocol with the flex and relax that should create a noticeable relaxing or release in the pressure of the quadricep and then you're going to want to go into the opposite side of the body do the soft tissue mobilization work on the other side and then go through the same protocol that we just completed and that brings us to the end of our quads our second segment has to do with the activation of the underactive or phasic muscle groups of the body Certain muscles are overactive, altering the joint centers, which then alter the mechanics of those joints. Certain muscles then become weak or phasic or limited in their capacity to recruit. Today we'll show you how to engage those muscles to reestablish the natural position of the joint center, increasing your efficiency and movement and maintaining your appropriate mechanics through the body. Now we're going to go into an activation of your transverse abdominis muscle. This is the deepest, most abdominal muscle that we possess. It lays under our rectus abdominis, our external and internal obliques. This muscle is primarily responsible for the maintenance of our lumbopelvic hip stability. So it's very important. If you're an extension dominant type person or if you have extension dominance, this muscle is traditionally weak or discontinuous meaning that it's not working with the central nervous system. So we're going to engage this by laying in a supine position. Ryan's on his back. He's going to place this roller as a spatial reference for where his leg should be in line with his hips. His heels are planted and he's slightly going to pull his heels back to engage his hamstrings just a little bit. Now with that lower body set up, he's going to breathe all the air out of his lungs, get his lower back to come in contact with the ground. That's going to help him to get that transverse to facilitate. And then he's going to lift his torso up off the table, supporting the weight of his head and his fingertips while making sure that his chin is tucked 
to engage his deep cervical flexors. Now that we're in this position, he's gonna breathe in for two seconds, try to inflate his rib cage without releasing his abdominals, and he's gonna breathe out deeply to a count of six and get all the air out of his lungs. As he breathes all that air out, he's gonna really feel that abdominal wall contract. The goal here is to maintain that isometric pressure by keeping the torso off the table the entire time. Ideally, the shoulder blade shouldn't be in contact with the ground and the arms should be outstretched and abducted to the side so that you can't see your elbows out of your peripheral. You're gonna go through about 20 breathing cycles, breathe in for two, and then breathe out for four to six seconds to get all the air out of the lungs. And then this should wrap up after about a minute to two minutes. So he's gonna drop back down. Good, good job there, Ryan. And you're gonna give yourself about 30 seconds to a minute to recover in between that set and then get into the other uh, set and finish it off. That's again, roughly two minutes of time under tension for both sets, and that should sufficiently fatigue your transverse abdominis. That's it for that. We're gonna move into our integration. Our third and final segment is integration. This is the coordination of multiple joint movements happening simultaneously while your body is able to maintain the appropriate force couple or muscle coupling relationships to support the joint centers and appropriate biomechanical movement patterns. This is how we upregulate your central nervous system. The integration exercise for extension dominance has to do with the recruitment of the gluteal complex. The gluteals are hip extensor muscles, meaning they pull the leg behind the body, but they also help to support the pelvis by keeping it posteriorly tucked. And they also keep the femur heads inside the socket where they belong. So if we don't have enough strength in these muscles, we have a tendency to see the hips tip under and again, show that characteristic hyperextension in the lower back. So we're gonna show you how to engage the lateral rotators and extensor muscles uh, while contracting the abdominals, and that's why this is an integration exercise. So Ryan's on his back, he's facing supine, meaning face up. His arms are to the side so that uh, they're off and retracted. His chin's tucked, so he's got a nice centered or neutral spinal alignment. He's got an exercise band just over his kneecap, and his knees are bent at about 90 degrees with his heels planted on the ground. So before he starts, he's gonna open up his legs up so that he feels the natural tension along the sides of the hips by pulling outward or abducting the hips, engaging those lateral rotators. He's gonna press his hips off the ground by driving into the heels, lifting the hips up, breathing in as he lifts, and then he's gonna breathe out and come back down. The goal here is to maintain the neutral spinal alignment He's gonna keep his ribs down and depressed by engaging his core despite the fact that he's lifting up. He's gonna breathe in and then breathe out and actively contract the abdominals against gravity as he lets his hips come back down towards the table. All the while, once again, making sure that the knees are open just about the width of the hips so that there's a constant isometric pressure on the outside of his hips. We're gonna go through about 20 repetitions. Once again, it's about two seconds up, four seconds down. You don't really want to rest at the bottom at the pelvis. You want to keep it hovering the entire time. And then you're going to try to get through 20 reps. After you're done, rest for about 60 seconds and then complete a second set. When we're all said and done, that would bring us to the end of our integration portion and finish our video on extension dominance. This brings us to the end of your mobility and release clinic. Make sure to apply the techniques that you learned today two to three times to optimize the results. If you have questions, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com or touch base with one of your movement specialists. As always, your body is designed to move, so stay in motion, and we'll see you next time in class.